Today we're talking about mastering the mixes exposed too. So if you guys want to learn about a software that can give you a full analysis on your mixes and masters, then stick around after this introduction. Welcome everybody, I'm Dan Spencer and I am the Audio Sourcer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing and mastering skills. So before we get to the video, make sure you guys smash the like button. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So without further ado, today we're talking about mastering the mixes exposed to. So if you guys follow this channel, you'll know that a while ago I did a review on exposed version one. And if you guys are interested in checking out that video, I have a link popping up in the top right corner now. So let's begin with talking about what is Expose. Well, Expose is an application that runs on your computer. It is not a plugin, all right? So you are going to load songs into it to analyze them. And it is going to tell you information about the songs. It's gonna tell you what the integrated LUFS is, the short-term LUFS, the dynamic range, and several other things. And it's gonna tell you if you have a problem with any of those and where that problem is located within the song. And it's gonna show you that graphically, okay? And you can determine that by different profiles. And the profiles would be based upon which you would be releasing it on. So things like Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Music, CD, things like that, okay? So you have that section of the program. Now, the new thing they added was they have a thing to analyze the frequency spectrum of the song to let you know if you are deficient in any particular frequency in the spectrum, okay? And that is based upon genre, all right? So we'll talk about how that works when we look at the plugin. And as you can see here, the plugin is $68. And if you guys end up liking this plugin after watching the video, I do have a link in the description below where you can go purchase it. So with that being said, let's get into this video further and let's actually take a look at the application and let's look at some songs in it. All right, so this is what the Exposed To software looks like right here. So the best way to get started is to actually load some songs or a song in first. So I'm gonna load in two songs here. So you can simply drag and drop them in here. And I'm actually gonna use two popular modern songs. So I'm gonna use Anyone by Justin Bieber, and I'm gonna use Save Your Tears by The Weeknd. And these are kind of similar in genre. They're both big pop hits with maybe some R&B flavor. So they'll be good to compare for this example. So after you load the songs in, you're gonna see a waveform for them, which is going to be blue in color, or potentially have some red in it. Now red is considered bad. Now we'll talk more about that as we go along. But the next step is to pick your profile, which is located up here. So I have the mastering all around profile. I'll show you some of the other ones in here. So you have some mixing uh, profiles, which I don't typically use. Uh, you have stuff for broadcasts and you can create your own user presets. So under mastering, we have some of the ones I mentioned earlier. You have some Spotify, you have SoundCloud, you have YouTube, um, things like that. So I like to use the all around one because that represents kind of a combination of everything in here. And I think it works the best. So that's what we're gonna stick with for this tutorial. Now, looking over here, these are the four main parameters that are looked at per song. So starting here, we have our integrated LUFS, which is the top one right here where my mouse is at. And then below that, we have our short-term LUFS. Over here, we have our decibels true peak and then our decibel peak. And then here, we have our balance between left and right. And then below that, we have our phase. And then here, we have our dynamic range and then our loudness range. So this is everything that expose measures in this section, all right? So if any of these are lit up in red, it's saying that, hey, maybe you have a problem there. And again, this is this software's opinion on that. That's not necessarily true because we are analyzing very popular songs here that are mastered 
produced, mixed, and engineered by the top people out there. So it's hard to say that they made a mistake, okay? So <laughs> take some of this with a grain of salt. But if you want to look at a specific parameter individually, you can simply click on it. So if I wanna look at the LUFS here, I have the short term is lighting up in red here, which means there's a problem with that. So if I click on this, this is telling me all of these areas in red here have potential issues with short-term LUFS, all right? And then if I do true peak here, saying that the decibel true peaks are having issues in these particular areas here, okay? So that's some examples looking at it visually. Now, a cool new feature they added in Expose 2 here is that if you hit this little F button right here, you can view analysis feedback. So let's take a look at this. And this will actually go in here and tell you exactly what you need to do in your DAW to fix these specific problems, okay? So for loudness, it's saying our goal is to hit negative 12 LUFS. And to do that, we need to reduce our limiter by negative 3.4 dB to achieve that. And then it also gives you a scenario for the short-term LUFS. And then you have some suggestions for peak, stereo, and dynamics. So that's pretty cool. They literally write it out for you and tell you exactly what to do. So that was really neat. So let me close that up. So that is pretty much the main stuff in the top section here. I should mention you can play the songs by simply hitting the play button here. And if you want to match their loudness so they're not all different, because maybe you do have a mix in here, maybe you have a master in here, you can go to loudness match, and then you can choose a integrated LUFS. You could do negative eight, negative 14, or negative 24, okay? Now, I'm not gonna play these songs because you guys have probably heard them before, and uh, I'll have copyright issues if I play them, so I'm not gonna play them. <laughs> so let's move down to the bottom section here, which is the new section I was telling you about that is analyzing the frequency spectrum of the songs. Now, what you kinda wanna do first here is go into the profiles for this and then open up this section, and you'll see that we have all of these different genres in here and then some overall profiles we can select underneath each one. So in my opinion, when I think of these two songs, I kind of think of big time engineers and I think of expensive pop genius. So that's what I'm selecting here for this, okay? And if we click on any of these here, so if I click on the Justin Bieber song, and this line here is how they show the frequency representation of the song, all right? And again, this is compared to the actual profile you have selected. You can actually load in another song and compare it instead of using one of these profiles, all right? So comparing this to the Evil Pop Genius profile here, you'll see that this actually looks pretty good. And the reason I say that is because basically the manual says that anything really between zero and plus three is good. Um, I usually say that anything plus three to negative three, because I know that nothing is going to be perfectly above zero all the time. So they're saying that anything above zero is showing more frequencies in those ranges than in the average profile. And then, of course, anything below the zero line is having less frequencies in that range than this particular profile. All right. So I think plus three down to negative three is a good range to look at. And I don't even think we hit plus three or negative three here. We stay within it. So that's perfect. All right. So if we were to look at the weekend song here, we don't quite do that here on the high end. So the weekend song is a little bit duller. But again, this has to be taken with a grain of salt. And to be honest, I don't really recommend putting a whole a lot of heart into this because really there's another tool I think that's much better to use than this. And that would be isotopes tonal balance control too all right and if you guys have never heard of that i have a video popping up in the top right corner now to my tutorial and review on that definitely check that out because that is a plugin you can use in real time so whereas to the integrated lufs here i think is better to look at 
after you export a song, not in real time, because it changes as you're listening. Uh, I think this particular section here is actually better to work on in real time so you can make adjustments in real time, all right? But hey, again, you may not have tonal balance control too. You may not be able to afford it. And this, you know, if you get this plugin here, you at least have something you can reference and it is beneficial for that, okay? So one last thing to mention in this section is that you can not only just look at the frequency spectrum from a stereo standpoint, but you can look at it from the mid standpoint and then also the sides. So you can get a full picture of what this looks like based upon the profile you are comparing it to or whatever song you want to load in, all right? So it's pretty cool. All right, so we'll leave it on stereo. So something else I wanna mention in here that I really like is up here, we can actually export a text file of this information. And this is great if you're mastering for a client and want to email them information about the song. So if I click this here, I can simply export. Oh, actually it looks like it just does it here. Let me pull it down. So this actually gives you everything. So originally in version one, it would just give you pretty much this here, which is really, that's all you need to send to the client. <laughs> this stuff here is more information for yourself. Okay. So that's pretty awesome. And then up here, you can actually save your session and then you can add tracks or recall a session. And then here is where you put your license key in. And then here is actually where you can get the manual. So I always like plugins that you can access the manual directly from the plugin. So that's always good. It will just launch it in a web browser for you. And you have your settings menu here. And then these are the settings in here that you can adjust for what you're looking at here. I use this on the default, so I don't mess with this. So that is pretty much everything you need to know about mastering the mixes exposed to. All right, so that was my review slash tutorial on mastering the mixes exposed to. So I love this plugin. I've been using it since version one. So I use it on every master. So mostly to check the LUFS, but maybe to see if there's any major issues in it. So like I said, LUFS is the main thing because I want to know from my own reference, but I also want to be able to let my clients know how loud their songs are, okay? So if you guys end up liking this video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe because I'm making this content for you and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. And now that you know all about LUFS and all about loudness and about this plugin, you should definitely check out my video on how loud to master your music in 2021.